Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 from scratch on your desktop PC. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so Windows 11 is finally out and there's probably some of you out there that are wanting to do a completely fresh install on new hardware. So in today's video, we're going to go through how to download Windows 11 onto a suitable USB drive and also how to install it onto a new disk drive such as a SSD or an NVMe in your computer. So things you're going to need, obviously you will need a USB drive, minimum of 8 gigabytes of storage space. You can go larger than that, but 8 gigs is the minimum. We've got a 32 gig version here. You will need an SSD or NVMe drive to actually install Windows onto in your PC. Ideally, I would suggest something more than 128 gigabytes. We've got a 240 gig and also we've got a one terabyte. We'll probably be using the one terabyte for this particular installation. You will also need a computer with access to the internet to be able to download the media creation tool. But other than that, that is pretty much all we need. So let's get straight into it. So on a PC with internet access, open up a web browser and go to the media creation tool website. The links for this will be in the video description, but it's microsoft.com forward slash your region, then software dash download forward slash Windows 11. So there's various options we've got here. So you can choose the installation assistant. So if you just want to install on your hardware that you're currently using as an upgrade, you can use the installation assistant to do that. Also, you've got the create Windows 11 installation media, which is the media creation tool. And also you've got an option here for downloading a Windows 11 disk image or an ISO, which you can then mount onto a USB drive using things like Rufus. But for this instance, we're going to create some installation media so we can have it on a USB drive to install on one or more computers. So the first thing we want to do is to click on download now. Now, I should preface this. Ideally, your system does need to be compatible. So if you're not too sure, click on before you begin and it'll give you a list of requirements, recommendations, etc., etc. Once you're happy that your PC is actually able to install Windows 11, just click on download now for the Windows 11 installation media download tool. Save it to somewhere where you can find it. So we're just going to save this to our desktop. And when it's saved, you can either choose open, or if you want to, you can close this window and use the media installation tool exe on your desktop. Double click it to open it, and you'll get the user account control come up, and just verify and click yes. Then Windows 11 setup will begin. So first of all, it's gonna get a few things ready. You need to agree to the user license, etc. You can, if you want to, scroll through and read all that, but realistically, it's yes or no. Once again, it'll be getting a few things ready. And then we get to choose the language in addition. Now, if you want to use it the same as the PC you're actually downloading this on, then you can just use that, use the recommended options for this PC. Or certainly, remove the tick box and you can have a little bit more control. So you can choose an individual language, which is suitable for you. We're going to choose English United Kingdom. And the addition is Windows 11. No other options there. So just click on Next. At this point, you should already have your USB drive attached and make sure it is the right one because it will erase a USB drive if it's selected incorrectly. You can as well also at this point choose an ISO file if you want to. But we're going to choose USB flash drive and click next. And then if you can, if you want to, refresh the drive list if you haven't installed your drive already. That's the one we're going to use, the drive D, and just click next. Once again, we'll see getting a few things ready and then we'll start the download process of Windows 11. This could take a little while, depending on your internet connection speed. Once it's actually downloaded, it will then process the download and put it onto your USB flash drive. So we're gonna fast forward all the way through this and we'll come back at the very end. Okay, so the next part of the installation is to uh, get your PC. And we've got our Windows 11 boot drive inserted into a USB 3 port, uh, that just makes it faster. USB 2s will be acceptable, but uh, USB 3 is preferable. When you first fire up the PC with your new drive, chances are it's going to either try and go straight into the BIOS or it'll start trying to run the auto install. If for some reason it's a drive which has got something on it already, you may want to choose to run your boot options from your menu. Now on this particular motherboard, this is an MSI motherboard, I have pressed the pause key on the keyboard. This is a little trick you can use. Hit the pause key when your BIOS comes up and you can freeze it so that you can read the information on the screen as you can see there at the bottom. So we've got press delete to run BAS setup, which you may need to do to enable things like TPM 2.0 or secure boot, which is required for Windows 11. 
If you want to see a video on that, let us know in the comments section below or head over to our Discord and we can walk you through that. The other thing you'll want to find is your boot menu options. So ours is F11 to run the boot menu. Or alternately, again, if you've got a blank drive and this is a completely fresh install on a new PC, you shouldn't need to do this at all. But we're going to press F11 anyway. And then you can choose your boot device. So we've got two options, either enter setup, which will be back to the BIOS, or we can choose our UEFI installation disk, our SAN disk, which is on partition one. So you can use the arrow keys on your motherboard to choose which one you want. And we're going to choose SAN disk partition one. When you're ready and you want to continue, just press enter. After a short while, you should see the uh, spinning cog, and then you'll be greeted by your Windows 11 setup. So this is where we choose our usual things. So language to install, your time and currency format, your keyboard or input method, and when you're happy you've got those set as you want them to, just click on next. Then we get options for repair your computer and install now. Obviously this is a fresh install, so we'll just choose install now. At this point, as you're uh, used to seeing on Windows 10, Previously, you get the option to activate Windows already, so you can type in a product key straight away. If you don't have a product key and this is a fresh install, you will need a product key to use some of the additional features in Windows 11. There is a link in the video description to premiumcdkeys.com where you can pick up a Windows 11 license key for less than £5 here in the UK. Prices will vary, obviously, depending on your region, but certainly worth taking a look at. Alternately, if you don't want to, you can just leave this blank and choose I don't have a product key. At this point, we get to choose which version we want to install. So you can choose Windows 11 Home, Home N, Single Language, Education, etc., etc. Most people, I think, at this particular instance, are going to choose Pro. So we'll choose Windows 11 Pro. And all of these are 64-bit architectures, as Windows 11 only runs on 64-bit systems. When you're happy, click on Next. And then we get the usual thing. So we have to agree to the licensing. You can scroll through there and check it all out when you're happy. Put a check in the tick box and click on next and then we get the options of upgrade or custom so if this is a fresh install you want to choose custom and it's just showing our unallocated space for our one terabyte nvme drive if you've got more than this drive showing then obviously if it's an older drive you may want to delete partitions in which case you just highlight it click on delete until you're left with just unallocated space if you've got more than one drive physically in your machine Obviously, do be careful what partitions you delete. If you're not sure, again, head over to the Discord, show us some screenshots, and we can try and guide you through it. When you're happy, click on Next. So the rest of this is going to be pretty much straightforward, and just going to have to wait for Windows to do its thing. There is going to be a point where Windows will reboot. If your USB drive is still in the machine, depending on your boot preferences, you may find yourself going back into the Windows setup after this first section is done. If for some reason you do get that, just simply remove the USB drive restart the computer, and it should continue with installation of Windows. So now we should start getting some messages about getting devices ready, etc, etc, and we can get into the main part of the Windows installation. Again, just be patient, let it do its thing. I would also say it's probably beneficial if you're doing a first time install, try and keep your hardware to a minimum if possible. So if you've got other devices such as USB printers, card readers, basically most USB devices or peripherals, Try and leave as many of those disconnected as possible. Obviously, keyboard and mouse are required. Internet connection, should it need to on an Ethernet cable, is worth leaving connected. And also have your Wi-Fi details handy, should you have Wi-Fi. All the other devices, you can probably leave disconnected and install them at a later date once setup is finished. You may experience multiple reboots as the system is configuring itself. Being that Windows 11 is just an enhancement, really, of Windows 10, you should find that a lot of the device drivers for your system will be pre-installed. The next part of the setup is to choose your regions and your default settings. So we're going to choose United Kingdom and your input method. And you get the option to add a second keyboard layer if you use additional languages. Uh, we're not going to do that, so we we'll click Skip. Depending on when you're watching this, it will probably check for updates depending how new the information is actually on the media creation tool. If there's any patches or any security updates required, this is the time when it will download them and install them for you. So after a little while, we should get the options for naming your PC. So you can choose to name the PC. I'm just going to call this stream as this is going to be my streaming PC and click next. 
So next we get this option, how do we want to set up this device? So if it's for home use or personal use, click on the top one. If you're joining a school or a works domain, then you can choose the bottom one. So we're going to choose personal use and click next. And then we get the option to add a Microsoft account. If you don't want to install a Microsoft account or you don't have a Microsoft account, I would actually recommend you do it. It's a very good way of making sure that everything is safe and secure. And also you can transfer details from one PC to the other quite easily. But if you want to, you can just choose a offline account. At which point Microsoft will try and convince you that a Microsoft account is the best way to go. But we're going to skip this for now. Next, we get to choose who's going to use this device. So let's just try stream, see if we can get us to use that. No, nope, it has to be something different from the actual PC name. So let's call it streamer. And then you can choose a memorable password. We're just going to click next. So our password is basically enter. Then we get the usual things. So the telemetry, let Microsoft and apps use your location. This is entirely up to you. I actually let it do it because things like weather advice and some other settings do work well. Find my device, you will need to have a Microsoft account to use that. So we're going to choose no and diagnostics data. So we'll just choose required only. We're not using inking, so we'll choose no there. And tailored experiences with diagnostic data. This is entirely up to you. I'm going to choose no. And let apps use advertising ID. For some instances, this actually does work out beneficial to click yes, because you get advertising, which is targeted to things you actually do look at or enjoy. But yeah, if you're a little bit more safety conscious or privacy conscious, click no. Once again, this can check for updates. And Windows will configure the settings you've just input. And at this point, like it says, don't turn off your PC. Just let it get on and do its thing. Famous last words. And there we go. There is our Windows 11 desktop. So this is the part where I would start to advise some caution. Now it's gonna be really tempting if this is your new PC and you're excited on Christmas morning or whenever it is to just get on and start installing all your apps, programs, etc., etc. But don't do it. Hold off. My suggestion would be to do things like search for Windows updates. So click on the settings cog, go to Windows update. And yes, there is updates to install. So we can go ahead and download those. I would strongly suggest that is the first thing you do. Go through doing Windows updates. Then after they've updated, there's a very strong chance you'll need to do another few reboots just to make sure you're completely up to date. At that point then, when you're on the latest version and all updates are installed, I would then strongly suggest you install the chipset drivers for your motherboard. Now, if you're using an AMD motherboard, there's a fantastic link you can click on up in the top right hand corner, which will show you how to install your AMD chipset drivers. Also, in the coming days, there will be another video for how to install your Intel chipset drivers, should you require those. And obviously, as the days and weeks go on, there'll be more and more updates to this video and also other tips and tricks on Windows 11. So if you wanna see how those go, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the chime icon and you'll be notified of future video releases. So it's done that update, we'll uh, click on it again just to make sure. Yep. And there's even more. So even though it's done an update and it said we were up to date, you click on scan for updates or check updates and there'll still be more. So yeah, we'll let it go on and do its thing. This is gonna be very much a thing that happens a lot, especially with a new installation of Windows 11. In the early days, there's gonna be lots of little bug fixes and patches. So do keep an eye on your Windows updates. Now, finally, we're up to date. So at this point now, we can go ahead and install our chipset drivers. I would do all that and also you could, if you right click on the start flag, go into device manager and have a quick look and see if there's any items which have got exclamation marks by them. We've been pretty lucky. It seems to have installed pretty much everything straight off. So our graphics card drivers, etc. Those will be the Microsoft defaults, which will be working, but I would again strongly suggest do your AMD chipset drivers, Intel chipset drivers. If you're using a NVIDIA, AMD or Intel graphics card, then go ahead and get those drivers also. But I think that's gonna pretty much wrap up the installation. Obviously, again, like I said, there's gonna be loads of tweaks and things we need to do to Windows 11 as time goes on, and we will be updating with new videos as that happens. At this point, if you want to, if the system hasn't already registered itself, then you can go into product activation. So just type in Acti or activation, 
and you can check to see if Windows is activated. And as we can see there, the activation state is Windows is activated with a digital license. So we've been really lucky because the hardware matches hardware, which we actually did a Windows 10 install previously. And also we were part of the Insider program. So Windows is actually activated with a digital license. Again, if for some reason it hasn't done this and you need a license key, there's links in the video description so you can pick up a cheap license key, which works extremely well. Well, certainly you can if you want to, you can just click on change product key and enter a new product key. Or if you want to add a key you've downloaded from premium CD keys, you can just go ahead and type that in there and activate your Windows installation. But we don't need to, so we're all good. Okay, so there you go. There is our brand new fresh installation of Windows 11 on our PC, all fully activated, which is awesome. Didn't expect to see that. I was expecting to go and buy myself a license key. So there you go. If you've got any comments or questions, you know what to do, stick them in the comments section below. If you need a little bit more help, a little bit more hand-holding, then of course we do have our fantastic Discord chat server, which you're more than welcome to join. It doesn't cost anything. It's free and open to pretty much anyone, as long as you're, well, friendly. So that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.